Hello and welcome back to the shop. This week I had these little studs, hinge studs, and they were quite a treat to run in the lathe. Basically on the threads there, I just started the threads and then I finished them off with a die because there was so much stick out in the lathe. And then I finished the slot with a sixteenth of an inch end mill. I could have used a slitting saw, which I have, but that thing just straight up sucks. So I ended up using a sixteenth of an inch end mill and running five passes fifty thousandths deep. So it wasn't too bad, it only took like ten seconds to do those. But there was only two of them, so no big deal. It's been a bit of a slow week here at the shop, which isn't a big deal since I still have a day job, but the past few weeks have been kind of overwhelming a little bit. So I took this week and kind of reflected on what I've done, maybe what I should do, in regards to which route I should take the business. Sometimes it's a little frustrating to me because I have all these capable machines and I just kind of don't know what to do with them. In other words, do I take on job shop work? Do I double down on these branding irons? Do I look up a product to make? And so forth. I don't hate job shop work. I just really like structure and I feel as if doing branding irons and or having a product is the best way to give structure and really improve on processes, which is my favorite thing to do. Improve processes program these machines and run the parts. I guess let me take a step back a little. I got these machines because I knew I wanted to start a shop, I had the money, and these were all good deals. So that was the reason for getting them. And I really wanted to do job shop work because I thought that's really what I wanted to do until it came down to actually doing it and I realized how frustrating it actually was. Now obviously I'm still doing job shop work because you saw those hinge studs at the beginning of this video but generally I only do job shop items if it's local and in that case it was a local person that came in and and asked for this to be made. If I'm able to think of a way to provide structure to job shop work where I can continually improve on the process then that would be ideal but it just is very hard when you have one or two parts it's really hard to improve on that process in any way because fixturing is always different and just things in general are always different and even tooling is different, which is frustrating because you can run yourself into bankruptcy on tooling alone. Whereas a product, mainly these branding irons, I've run the same exact tools for over 150 branding irons. So with that being said, I decided to improve the process of these branding irons this week, mainly on the digital side of things where I have to get the DXF file and make the 3D model from them and then make the program. So I just wanted to show you guys what Fusion 360 can do as far as improving processes on repetitive tasks. Now I have these branding irons but every one is different. But there is some structure to be made to that because it's one product just each product is a different variation. So after I get the DXF of the logo from Inkscape which is another video I'll go into I'll improve that process at some point. I created these scripts in Fusion 360. So the first thing I do is do the DXF import. So it asked me to copy and paste the path. So in my working folder over here, which is always on my other screen, I have this one called test DXF. And you can highlight it, hit copy path, and then paste it right in there. And this is the whole file path for that specific DXF that I want to import. And I hit OK. It imports the it imports the DXF, it tells me to select the logo features and run the next program. Cool. Okay, and then it saves it, and I don't have to even be in this folder to, for it to save to this folder, which is perfect because there's so many times where I've saved my branding irons out of this folder, and it's frustrating. I mean, I just have to move them, but it's still, it's annoying. So after I get that there, I select the logo features, and I hold control, or you can hold shift, and you can select every single one of the logo features that you want to extrude for the branding iron. Once those are selected, I hit control S again to bring up the scripts and add-ins, and I want to extrude the feature of the brand and then it extrudes it the amount that I want and there's no typing in numbers no nothing you just do it so then I and then I show the sketch again and I go here to select selection filters and I only want to select sketch profiles I want to highlight the whole thing because I'm lazy control s again and you extrude the base once the base is extruded I want to select this face for a hole so it's asking me to select a face to put the hole in. And I have to go over here to my selection filters and select everything, body faces. So there you go. And then you can select F for fillet and you can fillet these if you need to. 
and that is it as far as designing the branding irons now it is a lot faster but not only is it faster I don't have to type in any numbers like every time I had to extrude before I would have to type in the distance that I wanted to extrude it which if anyone else were ever to do this it, they could easily mess up I mean I have rarely messed up because I'm the only one doing it and I know what to look for but anyone else you can come in here and do that and be done with it and then next time I'll go into the cam side of things and improve that process as well but I think that's it for now so if you've stuck with me for this long in this video I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.